What's up, Parkview kids? Welcome to week four of our lesson series, learning all about creativity. Make sure that you stick around after your Bible story today because we have a special announcement just for you about something super fun coming up at the end of this month. But now, like always, all throughout this month, you get to choose which sweet treat you think will melt the fastest. Pick your sweet treat. At the end of this game, everybody stand up and let's worship Jesus together. It's time to show off some creativity. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. That's right, God made you out of about 30 trillion building blocks that we call cells. 
and I'm about to use this mini building blocks to create the International Space Station. The one I'm making is much smaller. When building a complicated structure like this, it helps to have creative building technique. Some people count out all the blocks and follow the instructions to the letter. I call these people the building block robots. Insert piece 325B into a piece 356-D. Some people can just look at a picture of the International Space Station and know exactly where every little piece goes. These people are called the visionaries. Yes, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it, it's picturesque. That piece goes there and we bring that piece in and it comes together. I'm the kind of person who falls into the third category. I use the just wing it technique. I'm a just wing it -er, er person. I mean, come on, these these are toys. They're, they're supposed to be fun. I was, God, how much fun is that? Now let's get creative. But most of all, let's have some fun. Uh, so I don't know. Just give me uh, like 15 minutes. I'll get this all all worked out. Why? I just there's, there's, there's just too many blocks. There's too many blocks. There's so, there's just, I've, I've been looking. There's this one little gray piece that I need to make it perfect, and I can't find it anywhere. This is this is supposed to be fun. I'm supposed to be having fun, and this isn't fun at all. Wee wee wee. There it is. Oh no, hold on. Nobody move. I just lost it. There's a little gray piece. <sighs> Clearly I could use a hand here. Probably a few hands. The story today is about a guy who needed a hand and his friends who used their hands and their head to get him some help. They worked together. Say, that's not a bad idea. I've got to make some phone calls. See you in a bit. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Mark, Chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Jesus began teaching and healing in Galilee. He had become so popular that a whole mob of people would show up whenever he entered a town. Oh, my tummy hurts. My donkey has bad breath. Tell me how to get rich quick in my spare time working from home. For a time, Jesus stayed out of the towns in lonely places, but even then people came to him. So he returned to the town of Capernaum and word of his arrival spread like wildfire. Stop what you're doing, Jesus is back. Yep, everybody heard the news. Even a man we'll call, um, Bo. He's here in Capernaum. But Bo couldn't just hop up and see Jesus. In fact, he lay on a mat every single day, unable to walk a single step. So his four friends will all huddle together. You think Jesus could help him? Well, sure. How do we get him up there? We've got arms, we've got legs, we'll carry him. So the four friends each took a hold of a corner of the mat and carried Bo directly through town to the home where Jesus was staying. By the time they arrived at the house, they saw everyone in town crowded inside and jammed around the windows and doors outside. Bo could see nothing but a tangle of legs. Guys? There's no way to get inside. I know. Bo can crowd surf into Jesus. That's uh, one idea. Or, or, or I could tie a couple of foxes together, set their tails on fire, and, and let them loose to make a pathway inside. That's also an idea. We could try the roof. Bo? The roof? We're not turning back now. So together, the four friends carried Bo on his mat up the narrow stairs that led to the roof. They could hear Jesus' voice below filtering through the clay roof tiles. God's kingdom is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds. But when you plant the seed, 
it becomes the largest of all. Guys, how does coming up here help? We're closer to Jesus. He's right beneath us. Hey, are you thinking what I'm thinking? It's time to raise the roof. Working together, the four friends shifted the heavy tiles until they made a hole in the roof. Below, they could see Jesus. Along with a crowd of confused religious leaders, teachers, and townspeople. The sky is falling! Time to move it. Using ropes, the four friends picked up Bo's mat again and slowly lowered him down through the hole in the roof. And I'm free, free falling. No! Don't worry, we got you, Bo. Everyone below scrambled to get out of the way as Bo's mat came to rest on the floor right in front of Jesus. Um, hi? It seemed as though everyone in the room held their breath as Jesus looked up to see the four friends peering down from the hole in the roof. Jesus could see the deep faith that had led them to bring their friend to him. Then Jesus looked down at Bo and smiled. Son, your sins are forgiven. <gasps> the religious leaders were shocked. Though no one said a word, they were practically screaming inside their heads. What? That's evil. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking. If Jesus could forgive sins, he was claiming to be God. Why are you thinking these things? Is it easier to say to this man, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? Huh. Fat chance of that. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. From above, Fred, Mary, Pip, and Sam all watched in fascination as Jesus turned back to Bo. Get up, take your mat, and go home. Every eye in the room turned from Jesus to Bo. For the tiniest moment, Bo hesitated. Then, he sat up. With growing confidence, he swung his legs around. And then, he scrambled up to his feet. <laughs> up above, his friends cheered. Huzzah! Oh, you go, Bo! Bo took a step. A hop. A leap! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. As the crowd watched in amazement, Bo picked up his mat and danced right out of that house. People moved aside faster than if Bo had been a, a fox with its tail on fire. I've never seen anything like it. Well, bless his heart and praise the Lord. Bo had been healed by the power of God and because his friends had worked together to help bring him to Jesus. You can accomplish a lot when you're being creative. You can cure diseases. You can design buildings. You can build an international space station out of blocks. Pretty amazing, right? But here's a little secret. You can almost always accomplish more by being creative with others. Other people can help you come up with ideas you've never had before. Other people can help you put your ideas to work faster and better than you can do on your own. And just like in our story of the friends who helped the man who couldn't walk, other people can help solve your problems. And when the problem's too big, other people can lead you to Jesus. No problem's too big for him. When we're creative, we reflect who God is to the people around us. And when we work with others, when we use our unique creative techniques with the unique creative techniques of other people, we can really show the world how uniquely creative God is. That's the one thing to remember today. God created you to work with others. You know, I didn't build this thing all by myself. I called in a bunch of people to help. Some were building block robots and some were visionaries. And some, like me, brought the fun. And we were just winging it, man. Wee! Just kidding. I'll see you next time.
All right, Parkview kids, so you stuck around. So here's your reward. I have a special announcement for you. Coming up at the end of this month on Friday, August 28th, from 5 to 8 p.m., we are going to have a drive-through back-to-school bash. There'll be games, candy, and prizes. You'll get an opportunity to be cheered on by your Parkview Kids team, your leaders, and you might even get to throw a water balloon at them, okay? So make sure that you don't miss this opportunity to come to the drive-through back-to-school bash. We hope to see you there. If you have the last name, A through F, we would like for you to come from 5 to 6 p.m. If you have the last name G through N, we would like for you to come from 6 to 7 p.m. And if you have the last name O through Z, like the Wizard of Oz, we'd love for you to come from 7 to 8 p.m. Or you can just really come whenever you feel like coming, guys. We hope to see you there at our drive through Back to School Bash. Our bottom line for this week, Parkview Kids, is that God created you to work with others. Let me show you what I mean. One of my favorite snacks when I was a kid, just like you, was milk. But not just any kind of milk. Chocolate milk. Can I get an amen? Chocolate milk is the best. Plain milk is fine. But chocolate milk, now we're talking. When you take Hershey's syrup and you mix it with milk, something creative and magical happens. When milk and chocolate syrup work together, just like we're learning, God created you to work well with others. So watch what happens when chocolate syrup and milk work well with one another. I'm pretty sure you know what's gonna happen, right? You just stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. And our final product, Parkview Kids, is a delicious glass of chocolate milk. God created you to be creative and to work well with others. Let's pray, Parkview Kids. God, I thank you so much that you love to have fun at church and that you are a creative God. When we come to you, you have made us in your image. You have made us creatively. I pray, Lord, that we would always remember that you created us to work well with others. May we never forget that. May we be the kind of boys and girls that get along with others and work well with others. We love you so much. Thank you for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Parkview Kids. So to end our time together, let's spend about two minutes answering this question. How can you work well with others? I love you guys. I'll see you next week.